of Asia, we are going uh, to the south on the Adriatic Sea. <clears throat> and I want to try to present you in short just uh, the monastery of St. Michael and some of the results of the recent archaeological uh, excavations that have been conducted in the last two years. Uh, they are just a small part of a larger uh, project called Archaeocultur, led by the uh, University of Juraj Dobrila from Pula, uh, and the concept of which is based on the collection, analysis, and systematization of data on archaeological sites in the municipality of Versar, and the use of them, of these data, in crafting plans and elaborating a concept for the development of cultural tourism in uh, municipality. I won't talk much about the project, we don't have time, I'm going on the directly on the one of definitely most important uh, archaeological sites and monuments in municipality of Versar, uh, Benedictine and Camodolisi uh, Monastery of St. Michael. Uh, it is uh, situated on the west coast of the Istrian Peninsula in the immediate vicinity of the village of Kloster, overlooking the Lim Bay. It is located in the area of the former diocese of Porec and near the historical centers of uh, Versar, Svetilovreč and Caliceto, uh, which were very much uh, closely connected with, with monastery during the medieval period. Uh, historical information about the monastery are dating, the earliest historical information are dating from the 11th century, uh, <clears throat> and the uh, study of its beginning, the history of uh, this monastery, was always revolving around the figure of Saint Romuald, the founder of the uh, Camaldolese order, who, what we know from his biography, uh, stayed in Isia for three years at the very beginning of the 11th century, and <clears throat> during that period he uh, founded one of uh, the monasteries here in Istria, and although it was never explicitly mentioned what monastery this was, um, a lot of um, authors who were dealing with this subject suggested that this was exactly uh, Saint Michael. But some other uh, facts are giving us right to think that the uh, monastery was functioning during the 11th century. First of all, we know that the church of Saint Michael uh, was built during the 11th century. And then we also have some historical information. Uh, for example, in Annales Camodolensis, we have the information that in 1040 there was some kind of uh, conflict between uh, Abbot Johannes and uh, Engelmar, the Bishop of Porec at that time. And <clears throat> we also have the information that uh, at the time when the uh, frescoes, the wall paintings and the church were in much better shape than they are today, uh, it was possible to see the inscription uh, that said that the church was built in uh, 1941 and it was consecrated by the uh, Bishop Engelmar. There are also two other very interesting uh, documents that were dated in the 1040. There are the donations from uh, the countesses of Atika and Vilpurga. They were the daughter and the wife of the first Istian Margrave Ulrich from the family of Weimar Orlamunde. <coughs> and they donated some lands to the, to the monastery with these donations uh, that enlarged its territory. But as it was uh, quite convincingly uh, proved already in the 1960s, by uh, historian Danilo Klen, it seems that they were both uh, forgeries from the uh, early 14th century when uh, Polish Bishop Bonifacio tried to enlarge, to get in possession of these uh, lands and to enlarge them. Uh, after the 11th century, we can follow uh, quite uh, dynamical historical development of this monastery. It was uh, <coughs> till the mid of the 13th century in the hands of Camaldolese order. After that, it was abandoned and came into the hands of uh, Porec. That is, at the beginning of the 14th century, it was for a short time in the hands of Templars. And by the end of the 14th century, it came again in the hands of uh, Camaldolese order, thanks to the monastery of uh, San Michele in Isola from Venice. It's interesting that even in this uh, period, these uh, forged donations from Vilpurga and Attica were very much used to prove the right on the land. And for example, this map that was drawn in the 15th century showing the territory of the monastery, we can see here that on the very borders of this uh, on the, of the land, they um, drew the alleged uh, uh, graves of the Vilpurga and Attica. The uh, monastery stayed in the hands of Camaldolese order till the end of the 18th century when it was sold to the uh, Coletti family. This uh, dynamical uh, historical development is very well visible on the structures of the monastery itself. 
and it's visible that uh, it was uh, forming through a very long uh, period of time uh, with very dynamic changes. For example, the old, oldest uh, building of this complex is the small church of uh, uh, St. Mary. It was originally built as a detached building, but uh, during the period of time it uh, had uh, several uh, very de uh, large uh, construction works. Uh, based on its characteristics, uh, it's, it can be dated in a period from 6th till the 8th century, especially based on the apse that was on the outside, it has this poly polygonal shape and inside semicircular shape and churches of these characteristics were built in Istria during this uh, period. Next to it, there is a church of St. Michael built in 11th century, and it basically incorporated the smaller church in its body, and at that period, these uh, doors were open on the uh, place of the older windows. Uh, we still have these uh, three windows, original windows on the south wall with the stone transients and uh, remains of the wall paintings on the eastern wall. Some other uh, original elements from uh, monastery are still preserved. For example, uh, these parts, these columns from uh, south wing of the uh, cloister and the cistern and some parts of these buildings of the south wing of the monastery are still preserved. Uh, and the youngest element of the monastery is this uh, Collected palace built in the 18th century when uh, it destroyed some parts of, of the monastery itself. Uh, based on all of these facts, uh, most of the uh, authors who were uh, studying this subject uh, suggested that uh, St. Michael Monastery was uh, founded in the, during the 11th century, or to be more precise, in the second quarter of the century, and uh, they all of course, took into account the fact that an older sacred building existed at the same location, which was uh, defined as the cemetery church of the nearby settlements, in particular the already mentioned Calisero. But uh, the archaeological research conducted over the past two years has yielded new data that shed fresh light on the, these topics and opened a window to a new interpretation. At the beginning of the research, it was noted that on the north facade of these buildings from the uh, south wing of the monastery, it is visible that it's got uh, several different building phases. Uh, based on this, uh, the analysis of sending structures was, was conducted, and it was followed by the archaeological research that, of course, uh, confirmed the stratigraphic complexity of the building and uh, showed that uh, the initial structure uh, function of this, uh, the eastern section of the south wing of the monastery. This was a building that measured some uh, 9 by 4.5 meters uh, at the ground plane, and only the parts of this north wall uh, of the building are preserved in the elevation, while, while the other ones uh, are preserved only in, in the foundations. Uh, on the north wall, we can see these uh, wall openings that uh, that are very similar to those that we have uh, on the smaller church of St. Mary. For example, uh, these remains of these windows that we can see above the doors opened uh, in the 11th century, um, when they're compared with the windows on the building, are very similar. Or, uh, for example, we have on the both buildings these uh, doors that have, I don't know how to call this, this uh, mushroom shape, I don't know how to call it, that is quite uh, uh, common for the buildings in Istria in the period from the 6th till the 9th century. They are different, of course, this uh, shape here is uh, more common in the earlier period, so from the 6th till the 8th century, while uh, this one is less common, but we can find very similar doors on the tower, nearby tower of Tornina, where uh, the first phase of the building uh, is dated in the early 9th century. Uh, Small archaeological finds uh, confirm these earlier dates, and uh, if you compare, for example, these uh, these examples here with some other um, material from other uh, archaeological, site, archaeological sites on the northern Asiatic, uh, they can be also dated in a period between seventh and uh, ninth, or the beginning of the tenth uh, century. Uh, besides this, uh, one of the charcoal samples taken and analyzed using the radio cover method yielded a result that suggested the construction or use of the building in the period from the late 8th to the uh, 10th uh, century. It means the period that pre precedes the large-scale construction of the 11th century. So uh, what we know 
for now, based on these excavations, that uh, before the 11th century, there was uh, this church and another building next to it, and this uh, perimeter, part of this perimeter wall was also uh, found during the excavation. Uh, but in the 11th century, uh, this complex saw a significant renovation. This was the period that uh, uh, certainly saw the erection of the monumental St. Michael Church with a form unique on the Eastern Peninsula. But it seems that at the same time, uh, the expansion of the residential part of the monastery took place when the older re residential structure was incorporated into the newly built south wing of the monastery. Also, it seems that at the same time, the arcade of the cloister was formed along the southeast and the west side of the courtyard. Uh, in archaeological layers dated to the 11th century, we see some changes, of course, in the archaeological finds, but activity in the area of the monastic complex in the course of the 11th century can, however, be followed with much greater ease through the preserved structures, remains, and fragments of architectural stonework at the site. For example, uh, fragments of frescoes uh, exhibit characteristics of the 11th century. Authors who studied this topic noted uh, that these paintings is uh, most similar to the contemporary art of the southern Germany. And although we don't have very much preserved uh, wall paintings from this period in, in, in southern Germany, it is noted that uh, shaping of these figures, and especially shaping of the drapery in the figures, is very similar to those in the paintings of German scriptoria of the 11th century, such as those at Echternach, Regensburg, and Salzburg. Uh, on the other side, these window openings of the church have the already mentioned transin, for which we find very good uh, comparison or almost similar, uh, almost exact uh, transins on the Another exceptional monument of early Romanesque architecture in Istria, St. Martin's Church in nearby Sveti Lovreč. This is a three isol basilica with uh, three projecting apses, typologically very similar to a number of other sacred structures erected in the course of the 11th century in uh, northern Italy, especially around the mid of the century, the construction of which is often associated with the church reform that saw their high points in the period in the work of the Benedictine communities. The fragments of architectural stonework and the frescoes preserved in the church are also consistent with this uh, dating range. So we can see that uh, not only that these uh, transients are almost identical to those in, in uh, St. Michael, but also, for example, these imposts are identical to those that we uh, can see in the uh, arcades of the cloister in, in uh, St. Michael. These frescoes are, again, connected with South and German territories of the uh, 11th century. All of this uh, further corroborates the dating of the St. Michael Church to about the mid of the 11th century, and this also uh, is supporting the authenticity of the information about alleged inscription that dated building of the church in the year 1041. Uh, however, this new information uh, suggest that the roots of the monastery should be thought in the earlier period, at least at 9th century, uh, the period of the formation of the oldest Benedictine monasteries uh, on the Eastern Peninsula. There, there's not much of them earlier than uh, 11th century, but for example, here in the territory around Rovin, you can see that several of them are dated to, uh, to the 9th century. Uh, once again, uh, this shows how the archaeological research can often change conclusions made upon historical data and analysis of standing structures and move the roots of uh, medieval monuments in a little earlier or even sometimes in, in even a later period. Similar thing happened, uh, for example, with the monastery of Sveta Maria Velika near Vale, that also after the archaeological research was dated to the 9th century. Uh, in course of the 11th century, uh, this monastery saw a significant transformation, very likely prone by the Benedictine reforms of the time, the Maldolese reforms above all, reinforced by the presence of the St. Romuald himself in the monastery's immediate neighborhood. Bearing witness to this is the later affiliation of the monastery with this religious order. Uh, 
St. Michael fits in this, in that sense, in a very dynamic building activity uh, connected with the Benedictine order in, the, in Istria at that time. From around 50 Benedictine monasteries known in, in Peninsula, most of them, around 80%, uh, 80% uh, were founded exactly in 11 or in 12th uh, century. But what is particular is the fact that this is a structure formed in a manner that departs from the sacral architecture of the early Romanesque period as it developed from the local traditions of early medieval architecture on the Eastern Peninsula. Uh, the St. Michael Church, like St. Martin's in nearby Sveti Lovreć, exhibits architectural attributes that find their models in the north of the Apennine Peninsula and in southern German regions. Also pointing to southern German influences are the decorations preserved in both churches built in about, at about the same time. So reasons for connection between Italy and, and, and Istria is not uh, difficult to find because it, they were connected for a very long time already from uh, uh, Roman period. But the reasons for connection between uh, South Germany and Istria uh, we can, of course, try to find in, in a contemporary political situation because Istria was deeply involved in political and cultural sphere of uh, South Germany and Northern Italy because already from 10th century it was a, a part of Bavaria and later on of Carinthia until in the 11th century it became a separate county. But even in that period, uh, all members of political and ecclesiastic uh, elite were of German ethnic element. Uh, for example, all, all Eastern Margaris were Germans, and what is very important, all uh, Aquilean patriarchs, beginning from the uh, uh, start of the 11th century, in the, in the next two, se two centuries, were uh, elected exclusively from the uh, German aristocracy, and there were a very strong link, political, cultural, and uh, religious link between Germany, North Italy, and uh, Istria. Uh, but uh, the key person, probably, for, uh, for this link was uh, the several times mentioned Bishop Engelmar, who held the position from the 1028 to 1041. But prior to this, he was a monk at the monastery in Niedel Artrach, so in southern Germany. And his image, which is quite rare, is uh, shown preaching in a Benedictional created in the scriptorium of uh, the Regensburg monasteries. The Engelmar Benedictional points to the very strong ties between Porach and Regensburg, which must have been reflected in collaboration through the artisanal trades and workshop that furnished and painted sacral uh, buildings in the territory of Forest diocese of that period. So just to conclude, uh, although a lot of research was done and a lot of very important works were written about the history, uh, economy, and architecture of St. Michael Monastery, uh, recent excavations have shown that this complex still have a big scientific potential, especially in means of archaeology research that could, if continued, brings some uh, very important new insight about the process of formation, development, and functioning of medieval periods in this part of Europe in the medieval period in 11th century. So thank you much for your attention.